Yep, I know, it sounds totally crazy. But believe me when I tell you that once upon a time, we thought Mario Balotelli was the player who would break the Ronaldo and Messi duopoly in football. As early as 17 years, he was a genius, expected to one day become a Ballon d'Or winner. Well, it's safe to say that by the time he turned 25, all hope of that was lost. You see, when it comes to football, Super Mario proved not to be the genius we thought. He was actually more of a mad scientist scientist, captivating the whole world sometimes with his brilliance and uh, others with his problematic tendencies. Everywhere he went, he drew massive attention, driving flashy cars, dating hot women and causing all sorts of mayhem. The media in England absolutely loved him. But it's a shame that football is not a popularity contest. His story has become a cautionary tale of what not to do when you get to the top. This is how Balotelli destroyed his own career. Born to Ghanaian parents, his name at birth was Mario Bawua. Sadly, he was born with a serious intestinal issue, and his parents, despite their best efforts, were unable to cover his medical expenses. As a result, he would be placed into foster care when he was three years old. Eventually, the Balotelli family adopted him. Regardless of his health issues, Balotelli chose football as his favorite sport as a kid and joined AC Lumazan. Over there, his talent would become obvious in a team in which he was the only black player. Soon enough, the big clubs would come knocking, leading to a failed trial at Barcelona prior to being recruited on loan by Inter Milan in 2006. At Inter, he would be coached by Roberto Mancini and then Jose Mourinho. While Mancini absolutely adored him, life under Mourinho would be quite challenging. The pair would clash on a regular basis, with Mourinho at a point dropping him for being being lazier than the aging players in the squad. Luckily for him, his talents would be too huge for Mourinho to ignore, and he would become the youngest Inter player to score in the Champions League. He was an enigma, seemingly able to do anything on the pitch, and much like Vinicius Jr. of today, the only way to stop him sometimes was to abuse him racially. The chief culprits of this were Juventus fans, who used every opportunity to show their disdain for the young striker. The FA punished punished Juventus for this, but the fans kept it up during every derby d'Italia. Mario really hated this about the league, so it was a no-brainer when Mancini sought to bring him to oil-rich Manchester City in 2010. In England, Balotelli reunited with Roberto Mancini and immediately sought to work his way into Manchester City's lineup, adding another attacking option to go along with Edin Dzeko and Sergio Aguero. He made his debut as a sub in the Europa League, scoring the only goal against Romanian side Politenica Timsuara in a 1-0 away win. During that match, he would get injured and be sidelined for two months. City fans would wait to see him get his first league goals on November the 7th, only to witness him getting sent off for violent conduct after scoring a brace in a 2-0 away win to West Bromwich Albion. Everyone could see that underneath that hard exterior and bravado was a proper talent, perhaps the best 20-year-old in the world world at that time. So, it wasn't much of a surprise when he won the Golden Boy Award in December. Neither was it a surprise when he proclaimed that one of the past winners was better than him, Lionel Messi. He also claimed that he did not know Jack Wilshere, the player he narrowly beat to the award. The next weekend, he scored his first Premier League hat-trick in a 4-0 win over Aston Villa. Super Mario was certainly living up to the hype on the field. It was away from the field that he seemed to be most problematic. By by the end of his first season, he had racked up $10,000 in parking tickets and had his Maserati impounded 27 times. Before that, he was caught trespassing at a woman's prison during his injury layoff. Run-ins with the law became a recurring theme for the golden boy. One time, he got pulled over with $25,000 sitting in the front seat. When the officer asked him why he had so much loose cash sitting on the seat, he replied, because I can. The media always had a field day reporting about him, but Roberto Mancini was having none of it. Once again, his ego had spilled over into the dressing room. In December 2010, he got into a fist fight with Jerome Boateng because he didn't like how the defender tackled him. The issue was settled between the pair, and for the next three months, it seemed that Mario had turned a new leaf. He was just focused on his games and getting a few goals along the way. Then, out of nowhere, in March 2011, the old man 
Mario was back. First, he was caught throwing darts at the youth team players after training. For this, he was slapped with a $100,000 fine. Thereafter, he refused to continue a match because he claimed he was allergic to the grass in Kiev. Later, he said he could play, but his face was swollen. Mancini had to sub him 10 minutes into the second half. In the return leg, he carelessly flew into a karate kick tackle and got a red card. The team lost 2-1 on aggregate, ending their run in the Europa League. Managing him was proving to be way harder than Mancini remembered it was at Inter. In spite of that, Balotelli got back into the team and was named Man of the Match in the 2011 FA Cup Final, as Manchester City defeated Stoke City 1-0 to win their first trophy in 35 years. Maybe he was worth all the trouble after all. In the 2011-2012 season, Balotelli became a huge contributor to City's success. With 17 goals in 32 games, he helped City clinch their first ever Premier League title. In fact, he was the one who laid on that pass for that famous Aguero moment. That would prove to be his only assist in his career at Manchester City. And yes, even with such a great season, he still managed to make a few headlines of his own. He refused to pass to Dzeko and missed a wide-open goal in pre-season by trying to showboat. When City trashed United six goals to one, he opened the scoring and revealed a shirt that said, Why Always Me? Sparking a massive reaction from the football world. Before that game, he and his friend took some rolling pins from an Indian restaurant and had a sword fight with them, violating curfew. Another time, he set off fireworks in his bathroom with his friends. One firework hit a bath towel and caught fire, prompting the fire department to come around at 1am. Interestingly, after that incident, the city of Manchester made him the spokesman for firework safety. If the idea was to make him more responsible, then it failed miserably. In January 2012, he stomped on Scott Parker's head and received a four-match ban after the ref missed the incident in the match. Once he got back from the ban, he whipped out an I Love You Raffaella shirt after scoring a goal. She was his girlfriend at that time and Mario was so obsessed with her. I guess that was a belated Vows Day gift to her. Funny enough, his love for her didn't stop him going to a strip club 48 hours before a game in March. When the club caught wind of it, they fined him a hefty $400,000. To imagine that all these things happened when he was playing so well for the team is just so crazy to me. On the weekend, he would make Mancini so happy. Then on weekdays, he would leave him so annoyed with what he was doing in the news and at training. You crazy boy. One time, he even showed up to a press conference in Italy where a new coach was being introduced at an unrelated team. No one was really surprised to see him. This was the same guy who had completely forgotten how to put on a warm-up bib in training. So yeah, the season ended with so much fanfare. City had made it to the pinnacle of English football and they had everyone to thank from Sublime Aguero to Crazy Balotelli. It was time for Euro 2012, and Super Mario had some strong words for his haters. I will not accept racism at all. It's unacceptable. If someone throws a banana at me in the street, I will go to jail because I will kill them. No one got killed. Instead, he gave us that famous pose after that stunner he scored versus Germany. He would end that tournament with the same number of goals as goal king Fernando Torres. The next season would be his last at the club. Mancini had tolerated him for so long and was now fed up. According to the coach, even though he was maturing as a footballer, he wasn't really improving as a person. In a training session, I said to players not to make stupid tackles on Gael Clichy because he was just coming back from injury. And then Mario made a strong tackle on him. I was furious. I grabbed him by the collar wanting to push him, but he's so strong physically, I couldn't move. Him. From seeing the pictures, you would think that we came to blows, but nothing happened. He came into conflict with some of his teammates because of his behaviour and he wanted to return to Italy. I was disappointed that he wanted to leave because he should have done so much more in an extraordinary championship. So, midway through the season, Super Mario left the club for AC Milan. 
Milan. Finally back home in Italy, Mario was fired up to prove himself once again. He scored a brace on his debut and went on a fine goal-scoring run for the Rossonieri. He scored a 30-yard free kick against Parma, equaling Oliver Bierhoff's record of four goals in first three matches for Milan. But soon enough, he ran into his first problem while playing for AC. A very familiar problem, racism. Some Roma supporters taunted Balotelli with racist shouts on May the 12th, 2013, leading referee Jean-Luca Rossi to halt play for a few minutes. The game finished in a nil-nil away tie. As Milan overcame Siena on the last day of the season to earn a spot in the 2013-14 UEFA Champions League, Balotelli scored his team's 12th goal in 13 games, helping them to third place in Serie A. Super Mario was back. The whole world knew it. The next season was more of the same. He scored a bag of goals, including an amazing free kick against Livorno, which was clocked at 109 kilometers an hour, and suffered some good old racism from fans and players alike. He himself accused Catania's Nicolas Spoli of using racist remarks on him during a match. No one else heard it, so no action was taken by the FA. To Mario, Italy had not changed since he last left. He was disappointed and didn't hesitate to leave when Liverpool came calling in the summer of 2014. Well, things didn't work out there either. His inner diva attitude returned and he managed only four goals in the entire season. Some of his Liverpool teammates were unimpressed with the way he usually spoke back to Brendan Rodgers. Ricky Lambert even recalled that when he didn't get his way, he would intentionally score own goals to disrupt the flow of training. That might have been overlooked if he was producing results on the pitch, but he wasn't, so he was out on loan to his former club AC Milan. That was the very first time Mario was seen as not good enough for a club. The downward spiral his career has taken after Liverpool has been harrowing. Everything that set him apart had gradually worn off. He was no longer the player with the perfect penalty record. He was no longer the youngster with the bright future ahead of him. Younger players had taken his place at teams who might have been interested. They were much more disciplined and willing to learn. Only teams like Nice, Marseille and Brescia had any space for him. Even the Italian national team had moved on. They might not have had a better striker per se, but he came with too much baggage. No one of repute wanted to deal with that. In the end, even these clubs felt that he was not worth the hassle. He became a free agent in 2020 and then he sank to lower clubs like Monza, Sion and Adana Demispor. What an anti-climax to one of the most exciting players we've seen. Sadly, players like him exist today and it's sad to see how much talent can be wasted if the right attitude's not applied. Thank you for sticking around on this crazy journey. If you enjoyed the video, kindly please leave a like and subscribe. Also, tell us in the comments who you would want to see next. Bye bye.